Hi there, YouTube. Mr. Lady out of here. We're on the ground at Strawn in Tasmania on the west coast. Then we find the uh, Cessna 172 that we bought here from uh, Brindy Island the other day. Taking it up to Smithton. Welcome airside at Strawn. You can see any links for scenery, repaints. You can go over here. repaints and all that kind of jazz in the description below. Let's jump on board. Aircraft cold and dark. Cool. So let's have a look at our flight plan firstly. So we're just jumping in. Obviously there's no ATC there today, although tomorrow there's a uh, event on in Tasmania when we're going to take Smithton to King Island, probably IFR, and then continue on to Melbourne. Flight plan today sees us leaving Strawn on a heading of 052, tracking out to Queenstown, 12 miles. We'll then do a possible touch and go here at Queenstown. Leaving Queenstown, we'll head on uh, north, 352 degrees, 9 miles. Now there's two options we can do here. We, if we have enough uh, clearance from cloud, we'll uh, climb up to um, 7,500 feet, tracking direct to um, Cradle Mountain. If there is cloud about, we may need to descend into this valley. So one option is to go around this hill and straight up the whole valley up to this point here. Then we'll go through this section around past these lakes, high altitude lakes, and uh, check the southern face of uh, Cradle Mountain before heading on from there. Worst case scenario, if we can't get through there, we'll just have to go around the entire set of uh, hills. But looking at the weather up there today, we should be able to make it all the way up to 75. From there we'll head out to uh, Wynyard, which is uh, this distance here. And then past the Nut, we'll do an orbit of the Nut, maybe even two. Then we'll head down to Smithton, which is only 10 miles from the Nut. Having a look at the weather at the moment, this is the winds and the temperatures. We have a is that northerly 4 knot wind, 5 degrees down here at uh, Strawn. As we climb to 2,000, no, first one's 2,000. Second one will be 5,000 feet. Uh, the winds from the west at 10 knots and west at 13 knots, depending how high you go. 7,000 feet should be 13. All that's above freezing, which is beautiful, and you don't get below freezing until you hit something like 7,000 feet. In which case it's minus 2 degrees, but there's no cloud about, so it should be okay. Hello there to Mitchie, Pilot 2020, and to the Toilet Inspector. Quick squeeze at our sectional. We have uh, Strawn on CTAF 124.2, same as Queenstown. And then once we get up north, and a new sectional at Wynyard, 126.9 and 119.1. Here we see the nut right there. And Rocky Cape. Hi Nathan, how you doing? So the first one, Strawn, we're up here in the parking area. We're probably going to check out the weather. Might as well do that now while you have the chance. Uh, there is an AWIS, I think. Yes, there is. Cool. It's always nice having an AWIS phone number. Just checking it. Two, eight, three. Yep, yep, yep. Automated weather information service. Strawn Airport. Time 0732 Zulu. Wind, 290 degrees magnetic at 2 knots. Visibility, 25 kilometers. Present weather, no significant weather. 
Cloud clear below 10,000 feet. Temperature 6. Dew point 5. QNH 1027 hectopascals. Rainfall last 10 minutes nil. That's all good. So 2902. Uh, which runway? 2930. 70 degrees off the south runway, so runway 36. Local traffic regulations. Anything for the right hand circuits on 18. So it's runway 36, it'll be left hand circuits. So we'll uh, start up, we'll taxi out, we'll do the run ups, and then we'll backtrack runway 36. Depart 36. Once we become airborne, we want to be pushing out to a heading of um, 036 degrees. 12 miles should take us 9 minutes to get where we're going at 80 knots. Hi there, JB. We get to uh, catch around the traffic. Okay then, let's get uh, ready to go. Fuel set to both. We have a little bit less than half tanks at the moment. There's no fuel to fuel up here at Strawn, so we had to take what we got from Hobart, Cambridge, all the way around. So by the time we get up to Wynyard, we'll need to make a stop there, fuel up the aeroplane, and then continue on to Smithton. All right, so let's turn on the batteries. Ah, it would help if I had my yoke plugged in, hey? <laughs> Keep it default. Here we go. Okay, that's working well. Just gonna pop this up to both. Pop in the fuel pump for a minute. Fuel flows into the green. Checking our prop is clear. It is. Clear prop. Beacon is on. Thousand RPM. Avionics on. And I'm going to chuck in a few uh, positions on this flight plan today. So starting off where we are, which is Strawn. And after Strawn. Off to Queenstown. Which is QNS, I think. Yep. Cool. Uh, 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 need to get rid of this one. After that, I believe we have CML. Just double checking. Yep, CML. And that one there, YM. After that, 
Wynyard, Y-W-Y-Y. -Y. And that's all we need for this portion. Meta has been checked, it'll be the same for uh, down in Queenstown, it's only like 12 miles away. QNH 1027. Or press B. <laughs> Weather is live, yeah. making it daytime so we don't run into uh, issues six degrees and I'm happy with that our CTAF 124.2 Also want uh, Unicom one two two decimal eight. Set. Want to listen to both. One and two set. Hi, Todd Inspector. Apparently they do. I haven't had a knock on the door, but I have had a phone call, but only one. So out of what? Four days that have been isolating. I've only been checked once. So the current showing uh, one is that one seventy five. Correct. In our first heating, airborne zero three six. Happy with that. Seven degrees Celsius. Let's move on out. Chuck the taxi light on. Let's lean this out a little bit. Let's check in my flight controls. Love seeing this shadow move. Can't see it on that side. Fire controls checked. Shadows are working okay. Strong traffic. Ah, not broadcasting. Strong traffic, Charlie Foxtrot, India, Cessna 172 is uh, taxiing outbound to runway 36. We'll be uh, stopping on taxiway Alpha for a short while to do run-ups and we'll continue on to backtrack. No one's chatting, park and brake is off. What I'll do is uh, head a little bit into the wind, then we'll do the uh, run-ups from there. I see that the um, Q&H has probably just kicked in, so the weather's actually working now. Everything's clear, windows are all closed. Let's run a check. Eighteen hundred. Mm. 
Mags check, okay. And to the right. Also okay. Idle is okay, about 700. Back to 1000 RPM. Hello, new skies. How you doing? Strong traffic. Charlie Foxtrot, India. Sesta 172 entering runway 36. Backtrack. Strobes on. And landing light on. Someone just sent me a text message. Ah, Victorian Health Department. <laughs> Speaking of the COVID test. <laughs> Please be prepared to receive the call from the Department of Health. Uh, we're going to get a phone call. <laughs> Dang. Probably going to be a long one. Here it is. <laughs> Hi there, Trent speaking. I'm calling on behalf of the Victorian Department of Health. How are you? Yeah, not so bad. Good. I'll just let you know that the call, call is being recorded for training and quality purposes. So that we can help you, we may need to collect health information about you with your consent. It's yep. important that you answer these questions honestly so we can help keep you, your family, your friends, and the Victorian community safe. Okay. Have you had Yep. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have had one. Uh, was that two days ago? Something like that. And did we go through who lives at home with you and what you need to do to get your consent? Did you
So that was a Victorian Department of Health just checking up on my COVID situation. <laughs> Let's get the uh, brakes off and go. Traffic's drawn. Uh, Charlie Fox Road, India, Cessna 172, departing runway 36. Departure, a uh, right hand crossing. Off we go. Ooh. <laughs> Boston. I've never seen the FBW do that. The only thing that I have issues with on the uh, fly-by-wire A320 is that it still doesn't have a VNAV. So you have to do your own descent calculations and it can't do a RNAV and it can't do a, you know, RNP approach or anything like that. So that's a thing that they're going to have to fix. Or a feature they're going to have to add. <laughs> More to the point. Yeah, that's the only major thing. Entering and Hand flies okay. I just got to a VNAV. Sometimes the um, LNAV is a little bit iffy as well, to be honest. Time was 51 for departure. So nine minutes is on the hour, double O. And we want to head to go 036. 1500s plenty good enough Just trim that out So yeah, the good old uh, COVID call. Good to see they uh, actually do follow up. Probably not as much as they should be, but you know, they got there. They got there. So six minutes out from Queenstown. I think I've got a visual out there. That kind of area. Seven miles. Steaming up my tanks a little. Uh, 
Hand Strong Traffic, Sierra Golf Echo, right hand circuit, departure, Strong. Queensland traffic, Charlie Fox running in the Cessna 172 at 6 miles to the west of the field. We'll be joining overhead and then uh, making approach into runway 09 after touch and go. Estimated time of arrival on the hour. Five miles. Hi there, Aaron. Locked down in the street as well. Uh, we had to stop on the runway because we got a call from the COVID people. <laughs> that was uh, inconveniently timed. So we're currently on the dead side of the circuit, we'll do a left hand uh, circuit on the runway 09, touch and go, and then on the second downwind we will uh, keep on heading outbound, then skirt around these hills, climbing up to 7,005. Yeah, it does a bit, at least it's not going to be eight months like it was last time, but uh, you know. <laughs> I really hope that they don't extend this lockdown. It'd be nice to get back into the office sometime, you know in two weeks or so. Or in your case, actual school. Let's start descending into the circuit height. Mr. Rich. Traffic Queenstown, Charlie Foxtrot India is on the dead side of the field on uh, descent to 1,000 feet, leaving 1,800. We'll be joining uh, Crosswind, runway 09, touch and go. Tolts and Christchurch getting flooded right about now. A lot of people are saying they've got a feeling that they'll extend it. And they probably will if the uh, cases keep coming through. We had another five new ones today. If people stay home like I have been, it'll be alright. Elevation 800, okay. There's the township, getting a bunch of airplane noise. I'm sure they're enjoying that. <laughs> Queen's Town Traffic, Charlie Foster in India, joining downwind runway 09, touch and go. Yeah, JB, that said the cluster is, you know, 
my house right now, so that wouldn't help me any. <laughs> Probably help people in like Ballarat, which don't have any cases at all. Well, the Gippsland, you know, Wodonga. Mildura, Horsham, Portland, various other places in Victoria that haven't had a single case. Let's lock down Melbourne and Whittlesea and wherever else the things were. That there is the problem, Aaron. The night that we found out that the um, Swordcraft event had had a case positive, um, one of the people that were there were intending to drive 300 kilometers that very day. Um, they'd pre-planned it, like they were meant to be staying away this weekend that we're in. And they're all like packing the car ready to go, and they heard, "Hey, there's been a positive case. Maybe don't go." Let's start this approach. <coughs> Brakes on the carriage mixture. Pump is on. Fuel seats and harness. Perhaps ten. Perhaps I'll leave it at 20. Queensland traffic, Charlie Fox Road, India. Final touch and go. Runway 05. 9. Let's go. Seventy knots. Start the turn early so we don't have to go to the town. Queensland traffic, Charlie Foxtrot India has uh, departed the field. We'll be uh, joining downwind, then departing via the downwind of runway 09. Uh, so, time 8.04. Call it 04. And it'll be 09 for. Uh, Lake Plimsoll. Yes, it does have updates every uh, month or so. It's every once in a while you just open the Zim, it's like, oh, you've got 5.8 gigabytes to download. Or 50 gigabytes to download, or 500 gigabytes to download. It's funny sometimes. And you get all the updates for the freeware products because it sometimes it breaks them. Not scenery, but stuff like you know aircraft that have all kinds of gauges and stuff that are yeah, it's annoying. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They update MSFS and then something breaks.
I like how it's 1 p.m. here in Tasmania and the sun is that low in the sky. Yeah, five gigabytes was the last one. I do remember that. Let's uh, stick the proper heading in. Be um, zero zero nine now. Is it? So three three four. There's three three four. Right there. Hey, I've got MBN and I've, I'm pulling down heaps of data on uh, Tangerine at much less than $100 a month. Going to move that to both. Keep climbing, keep climbing. I reckon we'll be able to make it up to uh, 7.5. So at time nine, we should be at a, uh, at a lake, and then uh, we'll be heading zero zero nine up. rare hiccups but not very much that said I've got HFC I believe uh, other people with fiber to the curb are just about okay and if you've got fiber to the node sorry about that sorry <laughs> blame Malcolm Turnbull ZHN. That's used to be an airfield, but not really much of anything at the moment. Time eight, and we should be uh, changing direction in just a couple of seconds. Straight up there, I think. Let's do it. Time 9 was on time. It's a slight retrim. 110 knots in the climb. It's doing well. Trimming it up. I love how slow the trim moves on the uh, honeycomb trim wheel. Yeah, between 175 Mbps. That sounds about right. Pity we didn't get uh, fibre to the permits everywhere, like we would have under Conrad, Stephen Conroy. Sorry. 
or rod. Okay, I've left Queenstown, we should be pushing up this this line here. No, it's this line here. So we'll take that all the way up to the top of the lake and then we'll uh, pop down into the south side of Cradle Mountain. Can't afford honeycomb? That's alright, as long as you have something to control your aircraft with. Honeycomb's a bit expensive for those that uh, have some spare cash. <laughs> School kids generally don't have spare cash because you can't work. Because you go to school all the time. We're heading eastbound, that's 5,500. I see no real reason to continue climbing for the moment, so I'm going to level out. Get ourselves uh, properly leaned off. And we'll keep looking at this wonderful mountainous scenery all around us. Broken yoke, that's not cool. At least you got a stick. Stick will get you by. Find more Airbus. All these random tiny towns in Tassie. Tiny towns, Tassie. Okay. That's a Roseberry, I do believe. It's either Roseberry or Tuller. I think it's Tuller. Tuller's right on Lake Roseberry, which is this lake here. We should make the next big lake up in front of us, Lake Macquarie, or Lake uh, McIntosh, sorry. So that's Lake McIntosh there, and if we follow the top of Lake McIntosh, the north side of it, around into this little valley, nicking around to the uh, left, we should have Cradle Mountain over there, here somewhere. In fact, that's probably it there. Nice, I can't get my FS Labs to work anymore. I think what I'm going to do at some point is just upgrade to uh, P3D version 5 and then you know complete clean reinstall of p3d stuff we'll fix it i'm sure <laughs> just hard to justify doing that when all the other add-ons are working yeah that's almost certainly macintosh there Or Macintosh, as we should probably say. I 
That's a cradle. Yeah, that's a cut across. Yeah, I might get V5. I've heard some good things about it. And it's worth having, you know, P3D. Because you still can't fly long hauls in this simulator at all. <laughs> the best aircraft we have at the moment is the CJ4 for a jet. It's the only one with a working VNAV. And that thing's got a range of about 1,500 miles. So you can't do a long haul in that. You can fly for about four hours and it runs out of fuel. So yeah, I think I'll uh, bite the bullet, uninstall all my um, PMDGs and my sceneries, and then load up into P3D. A V5 and a V5. I'm sure the reinstallation of everything will be real pain. Okay, I'll just cut across from Lake McIntosh. I'm going to try to pick up this river. And then we'll uh, make our way around Cradle Mountain which is coming up there in, in the distance. One thing I do want to check out is Dove Lake, I think it's called that. There's Crater Lake and Dove Lake, yeah. So once we have Dove Lake spotted, we'll know we're in the right place. But yeah, that's pretty much it there, Cradle Mountain. Cradle Mountain is 5,000 feet tall, so we're only 500 feet above it at the moment. That's what it looked like from the outside. Very nice Lake McIntosh over there. Not a road to be seen. How do you get to Cradle Mountain? Well, you walk. You walk and you walk. I wonder if any anybody kayaks up here. There's a few rivers. Where would you put it down if the engine quit right now? Eh, I'm thinking the river just over there. 180 degree turn then just land on the river. Better than landing in the trees. Or on a cliff. <laughs> yeah, the breakfast burger was great. I enjoyed it. Not sure what to get for dinner, but I'm sure I'll get something. I'm thinking Chinese, but we'll say maybe pizza. <laughs> but Chinese, I'll have to order within the next hour and a half. For pizza, I can order as late as another four hours from now, so. 
diet may be restricted by, you know, what time we order. <laughs> That's it, I've got some stuff in the house to just throw in the microwave, so that might be for dinner. Yeah, the Sullenberger. <laughs> They're going to be in the Hudson. See this massive sheer drop off into the river there and these really high altitude lakes here quite shallow the city on this plateau with the uh, river valley below them it's uh, quite a vertical landscape out here I think this is Lake Rodway coming up. It's a very interestingly flat plateau on the top. I'm not sure that's Cradle. I think we're down, we're one lake too far south. That's uh, Lake Wilt. That's Cradle over there. At the moment you probably want to board into the fields over here next to the lakes. Just don't land in the trees or on the hills. From the cradle. Slight hint of snow. The weather's been too good. It's been very cold, but there hasn't been any precipitation coming out of the sky. So that's Lake Rodway just below us. And Dove Lake just forward. Cradle Mountain, ladies and gentlemen. Definitely Dove Lake. That's a very distinctive shape of the lake. It looks like a 
a cockatoo's head with this kind of snaky body down there. <laughs> Do a circle around it. It's a light scattering of uh, snow. Which side of the log cabins? I think they're on um, on this side, aren't they? Somewhere around here. There's a, one of the, the tracks. See that uh, dirt track tracking down? The log cabins will be in, in the woods in here. Might be one of them there. <laughs> Bit too far south now for the tracks. One more pass and we'll head on out. Spectacular scenery. So from CML, Cradle Mountain, over to Levin River on the track heading at 309, eight minutes. 36 when we get there. Thirty-six. Yeah, no Hemsworth house. <laughs> it's an old shack. into the sun at the moment. Going 
going to pick that lake. Just aim just to the left of that lake. Uh, flying Z, hope you're well. Yes, yeah, Dalton Inspector, pretty good looking uh, part of the world there at Cradle Mountain. Wilderness tours, there's not much there. Can't even drive a car all the way in. So we'll um, <clears throat> pick up Wynyard, 126.9. Our uh, time arrival at Winyard is going to be time five zero. Yeah, time five zero. Heading three one nine. About there.
Yeah, the walls of Jerusalem International, uh, the uh, National Park. That's true. Yeah, quite an interesting name. Two random hills over there, almost look volcanic in origin. They're probably not. I think that's Lake Lee. That'd be uh, Black Buff. Bluff, sorry. Black Bluff. Lake Lee. Ran a bridge over the south side of it there. Yeah, that's really there too. <laughs> Why not just go around the lake instead of building a bridge around it? Okay. Never mind. Hi there, Paul. Yeah, quite a few uh, good spots here. And is this black bluff that we're flying over now? This thing here? Apparently there's a waterfall down in this direction called uh, Bridal Vale Falls. Have it on Unicom, nothing because no one's around. Cool. Coastline coming up pretty quick. Twenty-one miles. We'll start descending. Get down to about one thousand five hundred, maybe, maybe two thousand five. Maybe start our descent now. We don't need to rush it. Hey there, Paul. Apparently, it is the live weather. It did update while we we're on the ground at Strawn.
whether it's kept up to date or not, who knows. But I've placed the uh, hour back so we're not flying at night time. Should be something like 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Pretty sure I've got Winyard in sight. With the English River going into the headland just in the haze over there. Another message coming in. Yep. This is a message from the Victorian Department of Health. You are receiving this message because you have been identified as a primary close contact with a person with COVID-19 or attended an exposure site. Yep, that's me. This is a reminder that you are required to quarantine in your home or usual place of residence. I am very much aware of that. <laughs> that's why we're flying in that team instead of going out for the weekend. Could have told me that on, you know, Saturday. To be fair, they did tell me on Friday. So we should be entering the circuit at time 50. See if we can pick up the old Awis. expecting to hear. <laughs> Automated weather information service. Winyard Airport. Time 0842 Zulu. Wind. 260 degrees magnetic at 5 knots. Visibility 25 kilometers. Cloud clear below 10,000 feet. Temperature 4. Dew point 3. QNH 1027 hectopascals. Rainfall last 10 minutes nil. Go on. So wind 260 at 5. Maybe runway 27. Flight procedures, right hand circuits, runway 27. Cool, so we're on the dead side at the moment, we need to cross over. When you traffic, Charlie Foxtrot India is assessed on 172, we're at 4,000 feet on descent to uh, 1,000. We'll be uh, joining a circuit on runway 27 from the dead side. Estimated time of arrival 5-0 to the circuit. Traffic when you
Cal, my buddies from Quest are getting the same phone call that I'm getting. what the goss is doing so I've already made that initial call Next, you're coming up a little. Hello, Russian friend. <laughs> Sorry, I can't read this Cyrillic. I'm pretty sure that's the airfield right ahead of us here. do increase our descent rate a little bit so I'm going to pull back on the power landing checks uh, brakes are released undercarriage is fixed mixture is coming up pump on fuel set to both instrument QNH is set One zero two, was it? Two seven, five six seven. Yep. Seats and houses are secure. There's the field. One year traffic, uh, Charlie Fox Road India, Cessna 172 at 1500 on the dead side, descending across uh, to the right side of the field for a uh, right hand downwind, runway 27. Traffic, one year. Uh, 
Yes, reading it again. Flight procedures, right hand circuits, 27. Confirmed. I find that a little odd, to be honest. It puts us right over the town. I know it puts us over the water as well, but you know, you have to go over the town to get to the water. I would have imagined it would have been easier inland. Maybe they got some uh, some special constituents over there that are angry at the noise. I'll definitely need some fuel when we get down here. You can find out where to download this airport, it's not the default one. Default one looks almost the same from up here, but down lower we've got some extra buildings and stuff down there. Same for Smithton. Let's check in the more information tab. When you're in traffic, Charlie Fox Rock, India turning downwind of runway 27. Just going to pass the, the far end of the town here. Here we go. We need traffic, Charlie Fox Road, India, turning base, runway uh, 27. Little on the high side, we'll deploy the flaps early. Flaps 30, set. When you traffic, Charlie Fox Road, India, final runway 27.
Okay, we just need to uh, head over, pick up some extra fuel, and then we'll uh, pop over to Smithton. We need traffic, Charlie Foster, then you have a kid or one Other Aussie aircraft, 98. And yes, Toilet Spectre will be flying via the nut. Oh, we could do that, yeah. We'll fuel up, we'll take off, we'll do a touch and go on the, the railway line. <laughs> Might have been able to take off from that railway line, actually. So the wind 260 at 5, eh, not really. That's an interesting aircraft. Where's the fuel? Ah, fuel trucks, cool. Is there any Bowser? World Fuel Services, Atas Fuels, Phone, Call Out Fee, Avgas Bowser. Where is the Avgas Bowser? Oh, it's way over there. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, it is over there. Okay, we'll be back. Actually, we won't be. Let's do a U turn.
Can't believe that they put the GA fuel nowhere near where the GA parking is. I think we uh, had that issue before last time we were here. <laughs> over there. I'll go over this side. Hello Abdullah. You're speaking in a language that I don't understand. That's where we're going. Don't lose around the boxes, but we don't want to slap a wing into it. Okay, that's not PM, we've got the uh, parking brake set. Drop a few lights. Just gonna leave the nav in. Continue. Welcome to the outside of our aircraft. Over here we have some fuel. So with a fuel bowser you'd find a static line. Uh, don't fuel while it's thunderstorms. Don't fuel with people inside the aircraft. Don't fuel with the aircraft running. Uh, always chalk your uh, aircraft so it's not going to run away and uh, put the static line on so the static line to go on the middle part of the aircraft which is that thing right there exhaust and get everybody out of the aircraft Start the uh, Bowser itself, which is probably with one of these big buttons here. And make a heck of a lot of noise as the pump starts. And you grab the Bowser, pull it out to the aircraft, where you have a step ladder, nicely positioned. Now, often they carry the step ladder at the Bowsers, and then you just whoop, jump up onto the wing. If you don't have a step ladder, you can always step on that thing there. Put one foot here, put one foot there. Open up your tank. Fuel her up. And then open up that tank and fuel her up as well. Once you're done, retract the uh, pipe, the hose I guess, all the way back into the pump. And then we're done. Then we need to do a uh, fuel drain. Make sure that the fuel is the correct type of fuel. Didn't have water in it. All of that fun. Uh, to make the pump stop pumping, 
you do need to pay, otherwise the next person coming along will uh, pay as well. So the only way you can make the pump start pumping is uh, giving it your credit card, then you finish it by closing the credit card. Otherwise it's available for the next person to use your credit card. <laughs> Anyway, we'll assume that we've put in about half tanks. Maybe a touch, a touch more than half. It's unlikely that we're going to be exactly even. There we go. Yep, that's right. Disconnect the static line so you're not dragging the, <laughs> dragging the thing away from the, the fuel buzzer. Then you can let your passengers back in, and we're done. Let's go to uh, Smithton, Smithton, via the nut. I'm just going to pick up Smithton Awas right now. Since once we're at the nut, we're only 10 miles away from the approach. And things get pretty hectic at that point. Automated Weather Information Service, Smithton Airport, time 0906 Zulu, wind, calm, temperature 2, dew point 1, QNH 1027 hectopascals, rainfall last 10 minutes nil. Automated weather information Not much happening there. Wind calm, 2 degrees Celsius. No. <laughs> Glad I'm not there right now. 2 degrees. 7 p.m. at night, and it's two, just two, two degrees. Fun. Cracked out, and uh, let's pop on the beacon. Fuel pump for a couple of seconds. Check that we're clear. Clear prop. Steady at one thousand. Happy with that, checking our fuel. Yep, good half. Let's go to Smithton. Double checking our frequency 126 decimal 9, and I'll check Smithton as well because I might as well pre tune that. It'll be 119 decimal 1. Otherwise, the aircraft 98 COVID test says I'm negative, but I do need to test again on Thursday because it can um, you know take a little while to actually <laughs> affect you the properly because there was a exposure site so I was at one of the tier one exposure sites they know that a case was at the event that I was at while I was there the whole time yay so yeah I'm in proper isolation until my next test comes back negative and I'm not taking it until Thursday so on Friday I'll find out if I get to have a weekend or not. Park and brake is released. Don't need the pitot switch. Let's go. Wind near traffic, Charlie Fox Road India, Sesta 172 is taxing to runway uh, 26 uh, from the fuel bus. Come to a stop here because I think we might be going down there. Well, 
What I meant was 2 3. 2 3. <laughs> and the pile on 2 3 will need flaps 10. Flaps 10 set. Is that where we're going? Yes, it is. No, it's not. <laughs> Still your turn. Four PM. Oh yeah, that's right. We updated the the fuel. That changes it. Funny. So one thing you've got to realise about this runway is there used to be a railway line that used to cut through it. So it was like a a level crossing for a runway. In the intervening period, they have done two things. Firstly, they've shortened the runway by giving a displaced threshold, and they've also shut down the railway. In fact, they've shut down every railway in all of Tasmania, but anyway, beyond that. <laughs> When you traffic, Charlie Foxtrot, India, entering backtrack runway two, uh, two, three. There's the railway, right there. All that old closed railway would come across there. Let's go into better view so we can see it properly. So that brown line there, or the, the grey line, is where the railway used to come through. Straight across the, uh, the runway, right there. that line. So yeah, they shortened the runway, so you used to be able to land where the X is. The runway line itself kind of snakes around here, straight through there. Then of course they shut the railways. <laughs> That's a pity. Let's get going. Johnny Philly and Mr. Ducky. G'day. Devo Las Vegas and Dazbat. Cool. Let's get out of here. All the lights are in. Pump is in. Let's go.
70 knots, 75, flaps coming up. Trim that out. Right hand circuits on two, three. Time is 15. Rocky Cape, 10, so it'll be 25. And we want a heading of 281. Is there. That said, we can just follow the coastline along. That'll be easier. See you, Desmond. Have a good one. That's a lot of sun in front of us. I think I got 291. I think you might be right about that. Yes. That's west, that's 280, and that's 290. <laughs> Thank you. Paul Fibs getting uh, Paul Fibs getting the uh, getting a look at the HSI. It's great having an attentive uh, passenger on board. Or a Cessna 172 first officer. <laughs> We're heading westbound, so we're 2,500. No need to climb any higher than that. I think I'll be alright. Uh, it's probably okay where we were to start with. Yep, here. Yeah. 2500, drop the nose. Power coming back. Trimming, power, trimming. And that's uh, lean the mixture a little. Is that Rocky Cape right there or up there? Yeah, that's Rocky Cape and the next one beyond that is the nut. Indeed, Zaria. Playing the old flight simulator FS2020, which was released in August, Microsoft. This is the default Cessna 172 actually, flying over default Tasmania in default weather. I think V Fangboy might be a bot. <laughs> he said a very bot thing, didn't he? Robot man. Hope you're not a bot, Johnny.
Ah, DHS, DHHS. Rocky Cape. What time did he say we'd pass there? 25, currently 22. We are going fast for 80 knots. So that'll adjust our speed. Yeah, Johnny, the Piper PA28 looks really good, and I'll probably be flying that tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, tomorrow at about, or. Oh, say 23 hours from now continuation of this flight out of uh, Smithton heading up to King Island yeah the dress flight looking like a very good aircraft that one It'll be fun to fly Time 23, 24. Call it 24. Oh, that's easy. 30. Time 3 zero at the nut. Yeah, I'm looking at both at the moment too. Uh, the T-tail looks pretty cool on the, uh, what's that, the Arrow 5 or the 4, can't remember, the, I think it's 5, might be 4, <laughs> but there's one that's a T-tail, looks great. Four, cool, yeah there's a 3 and the 4 isn't it? Three with a straight tail and the four with the T-tail. Good looking part of the world. have to come back to Tassie one day. I think Tassie is small enough that it can do, you know, quite a bit of it without breaking the bank too hard. Maybe put the car on top of, uh, on the um, Spirit of Tassie and bring it over. One of these days, assuming work doesn't make me redundant in the next couple of years. So who can ever get out of this COVID lockdown <laughs> that we keep going back into? Uh, what a what a couple of years, eh? Can do the maths for the next bit because I oh yeah, just five minutes. Um, oh, that's easy enough. Cool. We're doing going to do a couple of laps of the nut, and then uh, when we come out of the nut, tracking directly at um, Smithton, which will be on a heading of 223, which I'll set up now.
two two zero one two three. Then it'll be five minutes from whatever wherever it is on the clock, and I'll just give the estimate as we leave the nut. So it's going to be like at the nut, two thousand five hundred, tracking into Smithton. Uh, what runways are at Smithton again? Two, two, four, and zero, six. The wind is calm. Right hand circuit's on two, four, so I can do a left circuit on a zero, six. That's easier for uh, where we vacate as well. So I'm going to be runway zero, six on the left hand circuit. Or we can go straight in two, four. Might do that. Straight in two, four. Five minute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's go for that. Oh, the Johnny Philly. I uh, don't have the 182 in Microsoft Flight Sim at the moment. I have the air to air one in uh, P3D, but yeah, not in this sim. It'd be a nice addition having a 182. You get an extra knob. Constant speed prop. Bit of extra power. be great if they did a retractable gear 182. I'd be really into that. There's the nut. I'm going to fly over... what's this place called again? Stanley. So this is a little township of Stanley in Tasmania at the top of the thing there and the nut just beyond it that big chunky rock there's also apparently a helipad somewhere around here I'd imagine it's that that's got to be the helipad there. It's next to the main road. And that's the main road. No, right there. That's the one. It's on the intersection between uh, the road that goes up to Stanley and the uh, the main road that goes up to Smithton. Helipad, right there. Don't know why they have a helipad there, but they do. You can see it on the, the VTC here. So there's Smithton, there's the nut, and there's a helipad. Stanley. Right there. Hunt for the Cessna 310? Yeah. I also. I concur. <laughs> That's a nice aeroplane. They're all nice aeroplanes. Anyway, there's a uh, helipad. That one just passing. Let's head up to the nut. Yes, reducing RPM so we can, uh, well, don't need to scream around the nut at 110 knots. It's sort of up to like 100, maybe 90. So the nut has a um, cable car that goes up to the top from the from the township, straight up there. Bit of fishing, bit of uh, sheep uh, running, or well, they tried to do uh, sheep running in the 1800s. 1820 or so, the, uh, the first settler came into this part, Stanley. Bit of uh, brutal, you know, interactions with the local Aborigine tribes, which have eventually been genocided, and there are literally no Tasmanian Aboriginals left. 
in the world. Turned into a little seaside town. I think the, uh, the homestead is way up there somewhere. Might fly over it. That homestead was a ruin until uh, a few years ago, where someone restored it. I think it's about 10, 15, 20 years ago. Big jetty there. The nut, which is on the thumbnail, if you saw the thumbnail. You'll see it again at the end of the video. Might do a figure of eight. Once around the nut, once around the homestead, and then back around the nut in the other direction. And we'll uh, try to recreate the thumbnail in the sim. Quite bright with the sea out there. There we go, the historical um, buildings, 19, uh, 18, sorry, 1820s, they built them, the first um, white settlers of this area. It's before Melbourne was um, put on the map, even before it was Batmania. I don't think there's meant to be any trees on top of the nut. Oh well. Well, Tim's put some there.
There we go. Roll credits. The nut. Get up to 1,500 and we'll do Australian approach. Mixed to Rich, five minutes from landing. Traffic Smith turn, Charlie Foxtrot India is assessed to 172. We're overhead the nut at Stanley. Tracking inbound the runway 24 at Smith turn. Estimated uh, circuit time is uh, 4. Three. Tracking for Australian approach, runway two four. Traffic Smithton. Brakes are released, undercarriage is fixed, mixture is rich. Pump is on, fuel set to both. Instrument is set. And uh, Seats and houses are secure. Bit of a scratchy window there. Down to a thousand. Smithed it in that space there. There's Perkins Island. In that space. Power up a little. Think I got it. Smithton traffic, Charlie Foxtrot, India, so that's the 172, is approaching uh, runway 24 at Smithton. Straight in approach, estimate touchdown time at time 43. That's definitely the runway. No circuit, just a straight in. <laughs> no other traffic around, so I should be able to get away with it. Two minutes to landing. Maybe two and a half.
Perhaps ten. Slight balloon. It's a bit different dragging it in on a straight in approach on a 172. Airline style approach. Feel like I need to be a little bit higher. Winds are calm. That's more like the angle I want. Pump 30. Charik Smith turn, Charlie Fox Road, India, short final, one way, two three. Nice round, make it without needing to backtrack. Traffic, Smith turn, Charlie Foxtrot, India is vacating runway two four. Gotta love a bit of the old dirt taxiway. Don't need the strobes anymore. All the landing lights. Leave the taxi light in. Pull the nose up a little bit. There we go. One two year old Smithton.
Packing brakes is it. Thousand RPM. Welcome to Smithton. Love to see that building there. Well, that's it uh, for the Cessna 172 for a little while. We'll be jumping into the new uh, PA28, which I've just purchased and downloaded. I'll probably spend a couple of uh, minutes at least doing a couple of circuits here offline, not on the stream, just to get used to the new aircraft. And then tomorrow we're taking it out all the way to King Island, single engine over the Bass Strait. Thanks for that, uh, Paul Fibs and Toilet Spectre. Yeah, I did enjoy the flight out to Smithton. One of these days I'll have to come out here in uh, the real world, but uh, to be confirmed, <laughs> many years to come. Till then though, I'll probably see you guys tomorrow night for Milk Run Monday. Remember, Milk Run Monday is a spilled milk run. If you're flying the jets, come out of uh, Adelaide to go to Hobart. Um, other than that, I'll see you guys probably on Monday. Find the Piper Arrow out of here. Yes, I probably will love Tassie. I've been there once before. I only went to Hobart and uh, did drive to Launceston via the Great Lakes. That was fun. But uh, need to see more of the country. More of the island. Haven't been any further to the west of um, a line between Hobart and Launceston. Anyway, with that in mind... I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye for now.